Winter is fast approaching, so this would mean I have now lived in my van for a full year. I first moved into my van back in November 2020 when I went through a breakup with my fiance and I couldn't afford the rent anymore on the flat that we were sharing. And although it hasn't always been easy, and it might not be the most glamorous way to live, I seriously can't imagine myself living any other way. So in this episode, what I wanted to do was take a look back at some of my first experiences of moving into the van and highlight some of my best times and some of my worst. So I never really watch my own videos. Um, I'm always too busy watching other people's videos. Of course, when I'm editing them, I see them, you know, you're always rewinding it back and forth and making sure everything lines up. So obviously I do see them. Um, but once they're on YouTube, they're just, they're on there now and I, I just never really see them again. Um, but I've scrolled all the way back to my very first video, which is a year ago now. I've watched enough uh, van life videos on YouTube and I thought, yeah, you know, I, I could do this. So I stayed in the flat to October when the tenancy ran out. And then after that, I used what would have been rent to buy myself this. So if you want to watch my progress, you can subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, well, it doesn't change the fact that I'm going to be living in this van for a year. Yeah, watching back on some of that, it just springs back. I, it's just making me smile just watching it. I remember when I very first got this van, uh, I saw it on Auto Trader, and it was from a private seller and they were in Portsmouth. And I didn't want to drive all the way there and drive all the way back only to say that I wanted it and then go all the way back to Portsmouth again. So I pretty much bought it without seeing it. I dropped a 500 pound deposit on it, drove all the way out there, the guy showed me around the van and I was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. And uh, at the time I had a Corsa and I swapped that Corsa in for, <laughs> I think it was like 80 quid he gave me for that Corsa. But yeah, I swapped the Corsa in and uh, I drove home that day in the van. Um, it was only when I got home, I realized that I didn't actually fit in the back of the van. I was too tall. So the living space is, 154. You need to make a bit of a headspace. So when I realised I didn't fit in the back of the van, I started thinking of these ideas of how I could make a bed that could fold or some sort of bed that could stretch out. But I was so eager to get into the van, I ended up buying this camper bed. Okay, I think it's literally the flushest fit it's gonna be. Does the door shut. And that was just a waste of money. I think I slept on that thing like for a week. What time is it? So it's 4.20 at the moment in the morning. And this sleeping bag is not mounting approved. It's freezing. I mean, it's a lot different from my big double bed. <laughs> in the camping bed was wet. Um, and nothing else is wet inside the van. It's just the camping bed's wet. So I'm assuming it's where my body heat is hitting the camping bed and it's not letting the air flow through. So it's just starting to get really wet. Maybe. Plan your van. Okay, right, that is probably one of the most important things is plan your van, make it fit for you. Everyone's gonna be different, you know. You, some people have showers, some people have toilets. That's totally personal preference. But when I bought that camping bed, I didn't even think about where I was gonna store my stuff. I remember I had about three rucksacks worth of gear um, with me. It's all just clothes and, and things like that and I had nowhere to put it because it didn't fit underneath the camping bed. This is everything I own. There is nothing else, but it still doesn't fit in the van. So also I have the bedding, 
the sleeping bag and the bed and all my clothes have to fit in this van. Starting to think I've made a mistake with the bed. Yeah, I don't want to be living out of bags, that's the thing. But I think with the camping bed I've made a mistake. Although I thought it was a good idea that it could fold away, there's no room for storage underneath the bed. So yeah, that was just a, a stupid, stupid decision. So that was, I think, like 50 or 70 quid down the pan. Um, so eventually I did decide to make my bed. I tried to avoid this uh, because I didn't trust myself with woodwork. I've never done woodwork before. When I was at school, we didn't do, uh, what was it, DT? I think it's called DT class or, or woodwork or anything like that. I never did any of that. So I've never touched tools in my life. Um, and I didn't have any tools. I only had a handsaw and a drill okay they are tools but i mean you know i didn't have like a circular saw or i didn't have anything to measure with or i didn't have the things that you'd probably need to make a bed it was just a hand saw and a drill and uh yeah <laughs> oh god i remember trying to put that thing i had i'm i'm glad i didn't have the camera on at that time because i had some arguments with myself i got to the point where it wasn't even square, it was like a weird off-skew diamond shape because I think one side was longer than the other and I remember I was trying to drill it in and it wouldn't go in and then I sort of lifted up and I headbutted the side of the bed frame and my temper and I just got like oh and I, I remember I picked up the frame and I was about to hit it on the floor you know I, I had to have a bit of a cooling off period then because whew, I would have smashed that thing up to bits <laughs> But um, yeah, that was fun. I luckily was staying at my mum's house whilst I got the van all sorted. So it kind of gave me that time to think what I needed. Um, I did some test runs in it, uh, obviously in the camping bed, uh, which was very uncomfortable. And then I decided to make the bed uh, and gave myself some storage. So yeah, before I actually set off in November, I think it took me about a month. I, st I bought the van in October and I started to live in the van full time in November. I started van life in winter. Probably the worst time to start van life. And I remember some nights I would wake up and it would be so cold, like ridiculously cold. At one point, there was actually frost inside the van because it got so cold. So the frost has found its way inside the van that is just awesome yeah that was a shock when i woke up that morning i remember that that was the first time i thought to myself maybe this fan life thing's not going to work out or maybe this fan that i bought was wrong um it took me a while a few tweaks and stuff but really i just realized i had to keep the windows open although it was so cold it just helped with the condensation if you just left the windows open during the night Christmas. Oh, I remember Christmas. I spent Christmas in my van. I woke up on Christmas Day in my van, parked down some side road in East London. It's the 24th tonight. Um, so it's Christmas tomorrow morning. Never thought I'd be waking up in a van on Christmas, but there you go. You've got to roll with the punches. Unfortunately, won't be able to see my family this year, but um, then be the rules. I remember I woke up and I was like, I never thought in my life I would wake up in a van on Christmas on my own. But that was, um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say that was like a low point, because I think I found it quite funny at the time. Um, so it's definitely something I'd probably, <laughs> it's something I'll probably remember for like the rest of my life, that's for sure. But I think my biggest adjustment to this whole van life thing is, um, you know, being on your own quite a lot which don't get me wrong I am one of these people that loves my own company and I sometimes probably prefer to be on my own but I think after my breakup uh, with my fiance that was uh, the biggest let's call it like a culture change I went from living in a flat and going to bed with someone you know uh, every night um, you know you'd come home from work and that person would be there you'd have your routine. That flat there is the flat that I used to rent before I started fan life. Yeah? Some good times there. 
well, some some good, some bad. But overall, yeah, it was a really good experience. And I got to this really low point. I think it was like my third month in. I just felt like I was waking up in such cruddy places and then working remotely with the laptop on my lap on the passenger seat. And then, you know, there was no showers available. All the gyms were shut. And I think that really all started to get to me. Um, I remember some nights I'd just go to bed at like 8 p.m. because there was just nothing else to do. Um, so that was pretty hard. That that was tough at first. You got to be a certain person to be able to live like this. I think. I think a lot of people love the idea of doing it, and I know a lot of people that have tried it and then they kick it in in the first like few months because they just just can't hack it. Uh, April 12th, uh, gyms open up again, so that would be good. Not just for the uh, old mental health, but the use of showers would be good. So by this point, I was living in my van for about six months six months of doing the same thing day in day out and at this time the gym started to open up so that was just a massive result for me because i was washing myself in sinks at like tesco's or morrison's i'd go there really early in the morning and i'd go to the disabled toilet and i would just like quickly put some shower gel in my hand and i'd like do my armpits and do my bits you know <laughs> Yeah, that was, a, that was a high point. Having a shower was a high point in my van life. But I guess some of my best experiences were being able just to get out there, explore the country a bit more, and meet new people along the way. Although my first year had a few ups and downs with all these lockdowns and all that, I wouldn't change a thing and I'm looking forward to spending another year in this van.